All right, guys, welcome back to Action Living. I'm your host, Sunbury Brandon, and today is Biker Garage USA. We are live here at North Texas House of Motorcycles, formerly Yamaha Suzuki of Texas, located in Hearst, over off of uh, 820 and Highway 10. Actually, the actual address is 1505 Hearst Boulevard. And I've got my man Kevin. What's going on, Kevin? Hey, how are you doing, Brandon? Get it real close to that, man. I'm All doing right, good. I'm doing good, man. Hey, you guys had a... Uh, for me, an unexpected bike night last night. <laughs> As I just told you, I learned about 3.43 to be exact. <laughs> Y'all were having this, and it started at 7. Yep. Uh, what, what went on last night, man? We had a whole bunch of guys out here. The Eagle 97.1 was out here with Cindy Skull uh, okay. doing a bike giveaway. We're passing out keys over the next couple of events to give away the bike uh, next month. So we had those those guys out here uh, set up doing a live remote. We had uh, Hooters was out here bringing us some good hot wings. Several of the girls were out here, and of course, some brew girls were out here doing a bikini bike wash. Okay, yeah, we're involved in that. I think we're involved in all y'all stuff lately. We, is, that, is that right? We always call you. You bet. Last time we were here for the uh, Supercross, mm -hmm. you guys were like one of the. How did you get picked to be like the place to have those guys at? Uh, you have to do a lot with the Yamaha rep, sell a bunch of Yamaha uh, motorcycles, and some then uh, request it. Yes, a bunch of that. Maybe spend a little bit of money. We spent <laughs> some money on the event, but we've had them a couple times. We had Suzuki a couple years ago, and it's always good to bring out yeah, riders. Some we the were here for guys. that also. Yeah. But yeah, you had Bubba Stewart in the house, Bubba man. Bubba Stewart was here. Yeah. Uh, did, how did those guys do that were here that night? I didn't uh, see the actual Super Bowl. They, they did really well. Bubba Stewart, of course, like he's been doing this year, is crashing a whole bunch, but he's always running up front when he's crashing, so hopefully he'll uh, get that figured out and finish up front is it me or it just felt a little odd that you had like you had about what seven guys here that night we had seven guys uh -huh. okay and i noticed uh jimmy and rick that this is rick by the way this is jimmy um hey, rick how you doing i noticed that as you you had them at the table there's a long table probably like i don't know maybe 12 foot table maybe longer maybe 15 you have all these guys lined up guys and um and then there's Bubba at the very end by himself. <laughs> it's like you, you got to give some room for Bubba. He draws a big, big crowd anywhere he goes. But it's I don't know. I felt uncomfortable. <laughs> I felt like it was a, uh, you know, Santa Claus and the elves. You know, it's that, like that's what it seemed to me too. I, I don't know why he separated like that. I don't know if that's something he chooses to do or, or maybe the other guys choose to do that. But he is separated. And I noticed the other guys were patting his brow down. Giving him drinks, serving him coffee. <laughs> I mean, holding his pens for him. I mean, I was oh, like, yeah. it just seemed like all these other guys are there to work for him. That's, that's <laughs> it, man. They know who's number one in that camp there. Yamaha does. It's been a lot of money to get him riding for the team, and uh, he's special. So if he has a now, who there was another big name guy that was there that night. Am I correct on that? Uh, yeah, well, some of the 250 guys, some of the lights guys were here too. I'm not sure of their names, but there are a couple of them. Yeah. I, if they come back next year, I'll be curious of all the crashing Bubba's done. Where he's going to be sitting next year. I mean, he might end up with a group. Yeah. And there might be another guy at the end of the table. He yeah. may not like that. I don't know how that's going to work, but uh, Joe Gibbs Racing, uh, who sponsors the factory guys, he's all about winning. So if Bubba doesn't get up front, he might be replaced. You know, in all fairness, though, I mean, the statistics will tell you where you belong on that table. So it's like, you, he, you know, he's no one can gripe at Yamaha or whoever, you know, the sponsors were and say, well, it's not fair. He gets to sit at the end of the table by himself, the almighty Bubba Stewart. But the stats show why he's there. Yep. So they have sure. a problem with it. Hey, listen, dude, get, get yourself on the track, man. Do better. Get going. All right, man. So last night you had a bikini bike wash. Mm -hmm. You had the Hooter girls out here. Um, I heard it was a big turnout, man. It was a lot larger turnout than what we're used to. Definitely the Eagle brought a bunch of people out, the Sun Brew, and then also we had a dyno set up in the parking lot, free dyno runs. Uh, we did ask for donations that went to, straight to charity. All donations went to charity. What and, is a charity? Uh, um, we did a couple different charities. Um, I think one of the charities was um, BACA. Bikers Against, against Child, child abuse. abuse. Yeah, We've man. been involved in a couple of yeah, different things. We do a lot of stuff with BACA. And then the Patriot Guard is another uh, group that we sponsor and, and support, too. Now, they're against the severe child abuse because I don't have no problem putting a kid in a little spanking. <laughs> I mean, they're not That's totally right. against everything, are they? <laughs> no, they aren't against everything. I think discipline they're all for. <laughs> okay, because some of these kids, man, need a good little spanking That's on their right. ear, man. <laughs> I don't know if this timeout thing's working, bro. <laughs> I mean, you give a kid timeout now, he's got his little damn iPhone. He don't care. I mean, no timeout. Hopefully the parents take that iPhones away in timeout, but timeout, dude. We had no timeout when I was growing up, man. Your dad pulled out the old, the the, uh, the belt. That's Your dad right. have a belt, Kevin? Oh yeah, belt, yeah. switch, whatever you can find. I tell you, his parents who didn't have a belt. That guy right there, Rick. <laughs> I got him. He had no discipline in his life, man. I had the belt. You had the okay. Well, it didn't work very well, did it? <laughs> it did not. All right. Well, so uh, Baca was out here. Um, 
Man, I gotta tell you, how many events are you? Are you involved involved in charities at every event? Is there something always attached to y'all's events? Usually, everything is attached to charity. We do uh, we do these events to get people out here, just promote the dealership, but don't look really for a financial gain in, in some of these things. So we'll be we'll be doing charity at every event. Are you okay that I admit that I'm in it for a financial gain? That's fine. Everybody, <laughs> everybody's here for a dollar. Everybody's sitting at this table. Man. <laughs> now it's funny because we talked about charity uh, off the air. We talked about charity today. And, and I, first of all, we do, we're very charitable. We help out a lot of kids for BMX racing, which a lot of that funding comes to the bike world. And these kids are going to end up on these sport bikes or Harleys one day or cruisers one day. And they're all, they're all have motorcycles, most of them anyway. But so, uh, but we help out a lot of kids with BMX racing. Uh, we also help out, uh, we're involved in the military, heavily involved in the military. We give a lot of counters out. We go visit the troops that are in the hospital. And, uh, but it's like people call me and I get these weekly. No exaggeration of the truth. I get something every week, if not two, uh, want me to be part of something and like you know it's for charity and I, I'd love to help out everyone that contacted Sunbury but it's our job you know what I mean mm -hmm. and I try to tell them as politely as possible I sympathize I, I'm sorry for the loss or whatever occurred but we you know everything has a charity attached to it there's right. not a one event we go to that doesn't have a charity so you know unfortunately I can't say yeah we're gonna show up for free you know every time there's a charity involved because everybody's got a charity they're part of so oh yeah nearly daily we get contacted by some kind of charity but we got to attach it to our shop it's got to make sense in a cross promotion way where everybody's happy absolutely but uh, but for those listening out there that start watching bike garages like I said I you know definitely contact us you know but but it's hard for us to be involved in everything you know I mean because this is our job it's our living and the girls can only donate donate so much of their time you know they got bills to pay so but uh, but it's good that you guys are involved with like the Baca uh, What's some other charities you guys have worked with in the past? Like I said, the Patriot Guard, they really bring out a big showing. We love to help those guys out. So that's another big charity that we, we support. Can you tell me a little bit more about the Patriot Guard? What is that? Well, is? They'll, they'll actually, for any fallen soldier, they'll escort them, give them a good burial, um, show the respect. Uh, most of the, the Patriot Guard riders, of course, all ride motorcycles, and um, they, they come in and shop with us. We like supporting them in return, and they do just a really good job for all the soldiers out there. You know when they're uh, really good is uh, the Phelps family. Whenever they're in town, have you heard of these guys that uh, like will protest the actual uh, uh, the funerals of the soldiers? Yeah, I have heard of that. Yeah, a lot of times, like the Patriot Guard is like very, very active for those types of events because to you stop know, them from doing that. Yeah, because you know they, you know this this family will do this just to get publicity, and you know it's a mess. And then uh, you know, good for these guys; they're always there. They're always there. So. That's got to be one of the worst. Who in the hell would go and do that to a few? You know, here's a guy that's passed away. to get the family there, and they're there to – that's horrible. I've seen that on TV. It's a family that does it, huh? It's called yeah. the Phelps. Yeah, the Phelps family. They're the, you know, the anti-gay, God hates – yeah. So. Oh, wow. Wow. Man. All right, well, that's sad. Um, all right, man, when's your next event going to come up? Man, we got one in two weeks. Okay, so is, am I correct on hearing, I think CB told me that every two weeks you guys are doing a bike night? Every two weeks we're doing a bike night, and then uh, in between that we do a, a pancake breakfast over at our other other dealership next door and invite everybody out to that. Can we talk about that other dealership? Sure, you bet, man. It's all North Texas House of Motors, but uh, we do have BMW Fort Worth there. Yeah. Okay, so now they're under the same number, same name. We're under the same same name. Uh -huh. i, I got to tell you, man, we talked about this earlier in the show. Here comes Sound the Mailman, by the way, guys. Um, we uh, I like the new name. Yeah, and I, I think it's got more of a hardcore biker feel. It, it does. It does. It, it reaches out to our cruiser customers and just tries to hit everyone. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I, I like Yamaha, I like Suzuki, I like, you know, and y'all have a name, a reputation. But I, when you hear that, you think of a different kind of event. And I think your events are going to grow because it does have more of the, I mean, the bigger events typically are like the Harley type, the cruiser styles. Yep. They're more relaxed. They're more dedicated. I mean, granted, the sport bike riders are great and all, but the guys that are hardcore been riding for 30 years, who are going to be your best customers, are uh, you know are the guys that are going to like that name, the new name. Oh so. yeah, I think so too. We're trying to, and we're always taking suggestions. If anybody out there has suggestions for us to to grow this thing and build on this thing, we had a lot of fun last night and want to get everybody on the motorcycle out here, no matter what brand or kind or any, uh, style it is. I think what is cool is all these sport bike riders and, and uh, love them to death. They're awesome. Some of my best friends ride sport bikes, but. They are going to turn into eventually being cruisers. Oh, yeah. At some oh, point, yeah. they're going to get a little older and want a little more relaxed, feel a little more like. So they're yep. all going to end up back at your shop. Yep, those 40-year-old guys get off the sport bikes onto the cruisers, and they're, they're hooked on motorcycles, so we'll find something for them. Yeah, that's, that, they'll transition. So it's probably yep. smart that you guys have this, a big sport bike following because maybe they'll buy their next bike when they transition over. to. Uh, do you know we have a name for what you are doing, by the way? Have you heard of the TBP? No. Uh, transitional Branding Process. Huh. 
because we were discussing at what point do we quit saying formerly Yamaha Suzuki of Texas. Mm -hmm. Would you like to know the answer to that? Please. Or do y'all? What y'all? Do you have an answer? Do y'all call it that? Do you say? Oh yeah. North, okay. Do you know when y'all are gonna stop? Because you're 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 a big dog right here. What are you? Gen, <laughs> G, are you GM or not GM? Manager? Just, just in charge of the sales department in both locations here. And you have no idea when to stop using that? No, I don't, man. I mean, we should be doing it now. Have you? Okay. Should be stop? <laughs> you should stop doing it now? No, we should start. Everything should go to North Texas House of Motors. We no, but I mean, at what the, point? At what point do you quit saying formally Yamaha Suzuki Texas? Do you know the timeline? We no, I, w I would think about six months after the transition. Uh, hold on. No, you're wrong. One year. One year, 12 months. Now we know. Now, because of we're, the service we just offered you, who, who do we invoice? <laughs> CB. Right, Send CB the bill. Yeah, we've had some uh, tested. We've tested this. We've talked about it. We've had a panel of people to kind of talk about this whole process. But the TBP is what it's going to be called. If you call it that, we also have that copyrighted, or we will soon. <laughs> it's all but about the money now. Transitional <laughs> branding process. You guys fall in the category. It should be one year. Yep, okay. And then you can stop it, okay? All right. And that's based on your ratio of advertising and you know, sales volume. All right, so uh, let's talk about what you guys are going. Jimmy, can you queue up the uh, the bike giveaway? Now, this is huge. I, I walk in today. Actually, I, I saw some Facebook because the girls were saying, hey, we're at, you know, we're over here doing a bike wash. I saw the Facebook mm -hmm. uh, and the Twitter going on for the girls. And then one of them mentioned you guys are giving away a free bike. We are. Tell me about, now is the bike picture up on the screen? People that are logged on can actually see the bike on the screen and they can okay. still see us. Tell us about this bike we're giving away, or you're giving away. Uh, it's a 2011. Suzuki went in with us on a promotion with 97.1 uh, The Eagle, and we're giving away the bike. We're letting Cindy Skull of The Eagle ride it. She's a new rider, just now getting her motorcycle license. We're going to let her ride it around and show it off at all her events until we give it away next month. And well, we're uh, now giving away keys. I'm not trying to call you out, but it's right here in front of me. She's not riding it. I'm well, looking at it. We've got to get it serviced out, and she gets her license this weekend. So ah, we, we okay. couldn't, for insurance reasons, turn it loose until she gets her license. And so she's going to cruise us around for a mm -hmm. month, mm -hmm. and then she'll just give it away. She's going to give it away free. Yeah, you just sign up for the drawing. We're going to do a few things to it, too, Watts, here. We've got a lowering kit for it. We're going to lower it down a little bit. Um, we're going to put some engine guards, some custom pops on it. Just trick it out a little bit for it. I want to say something real fast. It's not a chick bike. Just because Cindy's riding it, no. it's definitely not a chick no, bike. No, it's an 800cc fuel-injected bike, liquid-cooled. Uh, white walls, real classic-looking bike. Comes with all the touring kit on it, windshield, backrest, uh, saddlebags. Yeah, I like the bags on it, actually. The... the I don't know if you can see in the picture, but the studs on it, mm -hmm. and uh, it's sharp looking. It's a good looking bike. So that's going to be given away, and you said now every event you're giving away keys. Yes, we're giving, last night we gave away five keys to five different individuals. And How do you uh, get a key? What? How do you uh, we, uh, we just register at the front door. Everybody here, you have to be present to win, so everybody stuck around all night, and then, and then throughout the night, uh, about once every hour, we gave away a key. Okay, and so then you'll show up, and then... Yeah, they're just going to try to put the key in. There you go. That's it. Now, do they have the key? I mean, is it possible one of those five guys might have the key that fits in there right now? Like, is it an actual key? It's an actual key. Yep, we gave away a key, and and one of the five guys last night could have could have been the winner. We just won't know until uh, that day. What's to stop them from walking here today and just putting their key in to see if it works? I don't think we have a battery charged up, but that could be the case, man. <laughs> it may not turn on any lights, but it could be the case. We'll we'll have to keep an eye on that. Huh? Yeah. Okay. What if somebody screwed up and put two keys out there? <laughs> At some point in history time, that's happened. It's, oh, man, we're known to screw up, people, so that might have been us. Because they probably come with two keys, right? When <laughs> you buy a bike, they get two they keys? come with two keys, yeah. So, I, actually, I know because I've got one of the keys sitting on my desk, so there's oh, not okay. two keys out there. Oh, oh, good move, good move, very good move. Wow. Now, this event, when they give it away, um, dude, i got to think y'all should like get down to like the do you remember at your dealership when we had people eat dog food one time? We had dog food eaten, yes, yes. Was that over the line when I did that? That was a little over the line because one guy went all in and ate it all just for something. I don't even know what he got, but he did it for Free his kid. Free pass the speed zone, I believe. Free pass the speed zone for his kid and ate a whole can of but, dog food. But, I mean, you food. thought I crossed the line that I shouldn't have crossed? I, I don't know how safe that is, but, yeah, you probably you probably walked the line there. I mean, with the uh, <laughs> with PETA and the SPCA, i got to think that those are, if it's good enough for a dog, it's good enough for a man. There you go. You bet. I mean, uh, well, yeah, I kind of pushed the bar there a little, the limits there. You did, you I did. Liked we, it. we loved it. Yeah, let's do it again. Oh, so we're <laughs> did CB was CB okay when he heard about that? Man, I don't know if anyone told CB. He might have he might have probably ejected a little bit, but he he kept his mouth shut. All right, yeah, that was guys. I should have seen this, man. Oh, that was so nasty. What, what we do for our kids, right? It was the kind of dog food that's all wet and gooey. Oh, it's like the, in, the in the smell can, of it was in the terrible. Can. 
and I forget how it went. They they could they got to to choose like whatever they're going to eat, and they may or may not get the dog food. And it got down to one guy. I'm like, if you eat this whole thing of dog food, I'll give you even more passes. And his kids were egging him on. Oh, it was great, man. They, oh, man, I got to tell you. He didn't hesitate a bit. He dove in and ate it and was fine oh, with it. So, and I think I made him kiss his wife afterwards, too. <laughs> so. Yeah, his wife was there. I was like, I want to see y'all smooch about this. And, oh, it's so nasty. Mm. That was the first time for me, man. We had the pumpkin toss that day, too, where they Pump, threw the pumpkin. Yeah, pumpkin toss. Yeah, that was, that was a fun day, man. It was another good event. That was a fun time. I got to tell you, that, that was a first for me. Uh, all right. Hey, what about bringing back the... Uh, I know that things are changed a little bit here. We got to be a little safer about what the girls are wearing. Yes, yes. I got to tell you, one of the biggest smiles I've ever seen on CB's face though is when we did that bikini contest here one time. Oh yeah, bikini contest was great. Or, or, I'm sorry, pageant. The pageant, the yeah. Pageant. It wasn't a, wasn't a bikini contest. It was uh, a beauty pageant, maybe. Yeah, to to be the title of Miss Yamaha Suzuki of Texas, I believe. Oh, yeah. And uh, I wish we could do that again. We ought to be able to maybe. I just have to tone down the the well, what they wear a little they bit. Put, I mean, Trump does it. It's very classy. <laughs> it's the key word here is pageant. Pageant. That's that's the pageant. key word. And we can just have them wear a little skirt. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nothing Something wrong with like that. that. Nothing wrong with that. CB would love to sit on the judging panel again, I'm sure. Were you here that day? I was here, yeah. <laughs> he was smiling, yep. dude. He Bless was ear, grinning ear to ear. Such a married man. <laughs> 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 oh, All right. Well, let's talk about these bikes. Now, we just saw the bike you're giving away. And repeat one more time what that is. It's a 2011 Suzuki C50T. All right, and you can get your key. Show up to the in two weeks. They're gonna have an event. It'll be on a Wednesday night. Show up here. You might get a key that night. You can show up. I mean, what are the odds of winning? How many keys y'all giving away before y'all give this away? I think there's 25 keys going out. So you have a one in 25 chance of winning that. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good odds. Yeah, we had three three of our good customers win last night, so we we're happy to see that. But we'll we'll pass out keys to anyone. <laughs> Hold on, your good. Well, the other two are just scrubs. Man, the other two we had <laughs> never met before, but hopefully now they're good customers. At least you know they're coming back. That's right. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, let's see. Let's talk about some uh, used bikes, man. Let's talk about your inventory. Now, let's key up our first bike, Jimmy, which is going to be that blue bike over there. Okay. All right. Tell me when it's on the screen. It's on? All right. Now, you can't see it, but it's the blue bike over there, Kevin. Tell us what we got there, man. What it's do we have a, there? It's a 2010. Actually, it is a non-current brand new motorcycle that we're discounting down to our used bike price at ten nine ninety nine. but it's a Yamaha R1 1000cc race bike. Oh, that's that's used. I thought it was new. It is. It's it's a new bike. It's a 2010. It's only non-current. We were able to get some non-current bikes that uh, Yamaha still had in their warehouse. Oh, Bring I got them you. in okay. at a real cheap price, and uh, it competes with our used bikes as far as pricing for sure. No, repeat the price one more time. Ten nine ninety nine. Okay, now tell me anything. Uh, when you buy a bike here. Mm -hmm. What's the process? I, I bring it back here every 3,000 miles, oh, or how does it work? Oh, yeah. We have, serv we have service intervals on every new bike. Uh, first service, about 600 miles. You would want to bring it back in for us to do just an overall check, see if there's any kind of manufacturer defects. And then after that, about every three to 5,000 miles for an oil change, depending on what kind of oil you go with. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, well, there's one bike up. Let's talk about the next bike now, the black one at the very end down there. What do we got there? That's a 2009 Suzuki uh, M109 Boulevard. It's a 1800 cc cruiser by Suzuki. Okay, and that's a bigger bike. It is much larger bike. Like I say, it's an 1800. That bike has uh, a few aftermarket parts on it. It's got a custom set of exhaust, a passenger backrest on it. It's got about 6,000 miles. Sells for 89.99, about uh, five six thousand dollars cheaper than a new one. Man, that's not that's not many miles at all. No, no. six thousand miles. Mm -hmm. All right, and it's super clean looking. Yeah, we've got it here on the showroom floor. It, it uh, as far as cleanliness, is just as nice as a uh, new bike. Now, when you get bikes in here like that bike there, do y'all just pretty much do an inspection on it and say, okay, this is worthy of being on the showroom floor? No, we actually send it back to service. We've got a 66-point inspection that the service guys go through. Uh, they go through it pretty extensive. That way, when it leaves here, we can put warranties and, and guarantees on the bike, so uh, nothing should be nothing should be. Now, wrong hold on. With. It's a used bike, but you're going to put a warranty on it. You bet. You how, bet. how does the warranty work? Not a problem at all. We, we, just, uh, we look at the mileage and the condition of the bike after it passes 66-point inspection. If it uh, is clean enough to come up on the showroom floor, it'll have a warranty on it. Okay, and the warranties might vary from bike to bike? Very varies from bike to bike depending on mileage and year and things like that. Okay, all right, let's go to the next bike. Let's see, we're going to have this one right here in the front, correct, Jimmy? All right, what do we got here? A that's Suzuki. A, yeah, that's a Suzuki uh, 2005 model SV1000S. It's the sport model. It's a V-twin motorcycle. Uh, Suzuki no longer carries that particular motorcycle, but they use that engine. It's a, real, a really solid 1,000cc fuel-injected motor. 
Um, they've used that for about seven years now, and we've got it for sale for forty nine ninety nine, about thousand dollars under Blue Book price. Man, that's super interesting. Now, hold on, there's some add-on parts there, though. What do you got us added to that? Well, it com- it comes with uh, a dual set of exhaust, so we've changed that out a little bit, and basically that's about it, man. The bike's pretty much stock. We got it from the owner in that condition with the good tires on there and uh, low miles. I think it's only got about twelve thousand miles on it. Okay, all right. All right, our next bike up is going to be this uh, beautiful yellow one over here, this R6. Yeah, that's a limited paint job. That actually comes from the factory in that yellow with the black flames on it. Uh, the yellow strips around the wheels, and that's got a racing exhaust on it, G-Y-T-R exhaust on there. And um, it's an 08, 2008 model. It's got about 8,000 miles on it. sells for eighty nine ninety nine. All right. Man, how do you... You're not looking at a cheat sheet. How do you know the prices of these bikes and the mileage? Been doing this for a while, man. <laughs> yeah, but you guys have got a big inventory. We do. We have over 85 used motorcycles right now, and, uh, man, we, we bring them in all the time. Wow. All right. Let's see. Our next bike up is, I believe it's going to be the blue one down there. Is that right, Jimmy? With the gold? Yes, yes. That's a 2010. We sold that bike originally to a young guy. Uh, he took and traded it back into us for a 1,000 cc. That's a 2010 Yamaha R6. It's only got 500 miles on it. 500 miles. 500 that's basically miles. that's like new. It, it's barely broke in. We've already done the first service to it, which is usually a motorcycle's biggest service when we go in and check for any kind of manufacturer defects. But uh, um, we've actually, he bought it decked out like it is. It's been lowered three inches, uh, adjustable kickstand on it. It's got a, acro, uh, I'm sorry, a Graves full titanium exhaust system on it. It's got a Bazaz power programmer on it with a Bazaz electric shifter on it. This bike's fully loaded with uh, um, frame sliders, fender eliminator, the smoke turn signals, uh, integrated brake light with turn signals. It's got everything, man. It sells for $99.99. Okay, now he bought this thing. He's got 500 miles, and he's like, I need something bigger. Yeah, this was a guy that was getting back into riding, thought he'd be happy with a 600. Uh, he came off of 1000s years ago and just wasn't happy with a power delivery of 600, wanted something a little bit faster. Uh-huh. Uh, so he moved up to the 1000. Wow, that's a nice bike, man. Yeah, it's, it's not too uncommon for guys to ride it for a 600 for a year or two and then trade them back in. That's why we got a lot of clean U 600s right now. But 500 miles is like nothing. Yeah, yeah. he needed more time to ride. Yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's a good deal, man. It's awesome. What, talk to me about the bikes now. I'm. The uh, the different styles you got here, okay, like the, like the one we just talked about with 500 miles on it. How much of a difference from year to year does the manufacturer change? Every two years, a sport bike goes through a change in, in nearly every manufacturer, every CC wise. Every two years, they're updating, and usually what you'll see is is maybe a different braking system, maybe a different suspension package on it, maybe a different um, uh, you know timing and things like that. Just change up every uh, slightly, shave a couple pounds. Um, I know Suzuki last year shaved about six pounds on their new 1000 that came out, so they're always tweaking it. But every two years, see a new new bike. Now, now what do these? What is a typical bike like the uh, like the one we just saw? What does that weigh? Um, right now, the 600, especially the Yamahas, are about 370 pounds. And does six pounds make that much of a difference? In handling and where you distribute the weight to a sport bike guy, especially if he's doing track days or racing, it does make a big difference. Okay. Well, the majority of your riders, I mean, if you had to tell me a demographic profile, who's buying these sport bikes like we're seeing right here? Because well, we had we had one touring. Mm-hmm. But the rest of them are sport. What, what's your customer? You know, like? your 600 cc is, is probably your beginner rider or guy that's just now getting into it. So that's 18 to 23, 24, and then a past the 24 to 30, you get into your 1000s and 1300s. But if you're new, I mean, no matter how old you are, you should probably start. Maybe start with 600. Yeah, that's a good starter bike. Something that the power delivery won't sneak up on you like the 1000s do. Um, something that's a little bit lighter, easier handling bike. All right. Now, do you find many older people uh, on the uh, the sport bikes? Like over the, like, is there a certain age you notice that it really declines? Like maybe 35 and up. Yeah, when you start getting 38, 40, that's when they they tend to switch over to the cruiser. You know, they're off the sport bikes. But I tell you what, man, there's there's no age recommendation on these bikes. We get a really diverse crowd. I gotta think that you'd keep one just if you had one for a while to get rid of it and trade it. I would just keep it just to. For those days you want to get out there and maybe, you know, go out in the country, a lot of the turns are cool and stuff, you know what I mean? That's not too uncommon to have a sport bike and a cruiser in the garage. Well, they're so affordable. It's like having a $4,000, you know, something that's worth 4000 after, you know, after many years, 
why not keep it? Yeah, it's not, exactly. You know, now these toys, I mean, there's stuff in my house that, that costs more than that, you know what I mean, <laughs> that I never use. So why not have a badass bike? Uh, I could definitely, I think I'd be a touring guy. For sure, oh, I want a cruiser. Gosh. I want a cruiser, man. It's just relax. I mean, to me, it's about being on the open road and enjoy yourself. Those, when I was younger, I'd be all about that, though. <laughs> what do you ride? Uh, right now, I'm riding a sport bike, but I, I get to demo a lot of the bikes and cruisers. I, I switch it up a lot, yeah. Your sport bike right now, though? Yep, sport bikes right now. You want to say what you, what you got? Uh, I got a Suzuki 1000. Okay. Yeah. Anything done to it? Uh, well, I've got a few 1000s, and yeah, I have an old race bike that I, I stopped racing in 08, so I've still got that. Do some track days. I'm an instructor at a, a, a track school, and uh, every day I ride the bike back for to work. Yeah, too, I saw so. you last time I was here a couple weeks ago when the, when the guys with the team was here. I saw you leaving off on your bike. Yeah. No. Yeah. Now, do you ride in the rain? Always. Ride every day. Really? No matter what the weather condition is. If there's not ice on the road, I ride. You bet. Got an 06 model with about uh, 84,000 miles on it. So if you just look outside and it's raining, you're still going to ride a bike to work? Yeah, yeah, man. Put on the rain gear and go. Really? Wow, <laughs> it's not man. hard at all. It, it sprinkled on me on the way in this morning. Well, it gets a little hot, a little sprinkle. It may be a good thing. <laughs> How do these bikes here compare, like the uh, sport bike, compared to the, the uh, touring bikes as far as on the, on the road when it's raining? You know, a, a cruiser handles really well because of the weight of it. You know, most cruisers are 800, you know, seven, 800 pounds. So the heaviness of the bike getting blown around and getting through the rain is pretty good. Um, a lot of the cruisers come with windshields and things like that to protect you from the rain. But, you know, a sport bike, it handles really good no matter what the weather condition is. Um, you know, the tires are really good, usually a softer rubber on the tires. So, so both of them do pretty good. You just got to slow down a little bit. Watch out for the turns or the oil that might, might have come up in the rain. Just be yeah. careful. Gotcha. Now, at the riding classes, how much do they go into safety when it comes to the conditions? Uh, well, i got to think that's a big part of it. This is uh, The school that I teach is a, is a race school. Oh, so it's, um, it's more of an advanced. But yeah, it's an advanced course, but we teach safety all the time. We really do, especially with the gear and the outfits we wear with the leather suits and the current updated helmets and the gloves and the boots. I mean, there's a lot that goes into safety just because in a race situation, you know, the, the crashing's a bigger chance. So, so safety is a very important part of our school. You know, I noticed in the last 10 years, I, I, when I was a kid, all my friends rode. And they, were, they were all about it. But I noticed, like, everyone seems to wear the safety gear now. The everyone. jackets, I mean, I don't remember that at all when I was younger. Like, you well, know, when we were younger, you know, you just had a leather jacket, and that was it. Now the advance, The Fonzie jacket. Yeah, yeah, the advancement with safety gear with the mesh so you can wear it during the summertime with the cold weather gear, with, like I say, the rain gear, everything. It's all about the gear. That makes the ride that much more fun. And protection is a big deal right now. You know, and I notice, I mean, when the guys, especially like the racing on the TV, you see them, they're going 150, whatever, and they, they wipe out, they get right up. Yeah, yeah, safety's a, man, safety's, the suit is all about safety, and it does, it does work. Because now, now, for those that don't know, they have a, like protection like in the elbows, the shoulders. Yeah, you get a lot of memory foam right there, so it disperses the, the hit right away, and you get it in the elbows, the shoulders. You even have back protectors now, hip, knee protection. Um, some of the boots actually put, put metal inside on, on, on the bones there by your feet to protect that, and, of course, the gloves, man, reinforce there. Now, you, you've been around motocross your whole life, right? Yeah. Leathers. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, was motocross, were they actually leathers? Why do they call them leathers? Are you talking about sport bikes, racing sport, sport bikes? Not no, 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 I'm talking about MX. They, it was, like even in BMX, they used to call them your leathers. Your pants were called leathers. I, I don't know why they started that. Did you, ra you race the MX day. or did you race BMX? Sport? Yeah, I mean, that was a long time ago. I don't remember what we called it. But did, did you <laughs> race motocross, yeah. You raced motocross? Uh -huh, you don't remember, they didn't call them leathers when you raced? No, I don't remember that. But they I was used to young, always man. call them leathers. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and up until maybe, maybe 10 years ago, even in BMX, they like your leathers. Old school guys, BMX still call them leathers. But they're not leather at all. They're yeah. they're very lightweight and material. But uh, showing our age, man. <laughs> yeah, you raced at Cowtown, right? Where'd Cowtown BMX, yes. Yeah, yeah I did a little bit of Casino Beach. I don't even think that place is around it's anymore. It's gone. But Cowtown's still there. <laughs> we had a Texas BMX Hall of Fame um, about three weeks ago, man. Oh wow! And they brought guys from the '70s and '80s that raced at Cowtown and put them all in there like these big time pros that you know. And in, in about three months, they're doing another Hall of Fame meeting, and it's the guys from the '80s. So oh, more of our era, but it's pretty cool. It's pretty exciting to see, like you know, where it all came from because it all started from motocross. Yeah, yeah. You know, but in fact, Yamaha used to have uh, BMX bicycles. Did I, you know that? I did not know that. Need to do oh, some yeah. research on that. That's cool. In the seventies, you remember the name Stu Thompson? Yeah, yeah. Guys like that were riding these Yamaha bicycles, mm -hmm. and uh, that's that was a big sponsor for BMX. And they used to be in, like these crazy places. There wasn't a lot of jumps or anything. It was like in, uh, in arenas, mm -hmm. and it was kind of like almost a flat track of a couple little wood jumps. 
<laughs> but it was all done by Yamaha, man. I've checked it's that pretty, out. Pretty, pretty interesting, I'd like man. to find one of those bikes if anybody has one. Yeah, well, that would be kind of cool to that have for your be, shop, wouldn't that it? That would be cool. That'd be, I know a guy builds one right now, man. He probably won't part of it, but he's building one up. It's pretty sweet. Awesome. Well, listen, man. Uh, listen, thanks for being on the show today, man. Thank you all for coming out. It's uh, This is Biker Garage. We have Kevin right here from uh, North Texas uh, House of Motorcycles. What's your website? It is uh, ntxofcycles.com. ntxofcycles.com. And is all your inventory online? Yeah, all our inventory is online. There's a tab there that says pre-owned. Just click on that. Uh, what's, what's your phone number? Area code 817-285-9999. All right, now all the bikes that we showed today will be on BikerGarageUSA.com. You can check them out. We'll also have this interview back on there later. We'll, uh, we'll be at your next event, I guess, in two Wednesdays from now. We'll be out here hanging out. I'm assuming something probably probably bikini bike wash again, but all the sunburgers will be here. Maybe some hula hoops, too. Always that brings out a crowd, oh, yeah. too. <laughs> it's funny. You know, we're, we're just getting into bike season. And the other day, like, oh, we, we did a uh, Sunday uh, bike wash at uh, the back mountain Addison. Like, we need the hula hoops. We forgot the hula hoops. There you go, man. You know, we're, we're, a little rust, we're a little rusty right now. we got to get back on our game, man. But it's season's here, dude. What, a, what an awesome biker winter we had. We did. We did. We, nobody ever put up their bikes. We stayed busy year-round, so it was awesome. I'm praying that it doesn't get super hot this year like it was last year. But we had a mild winter. I'm hoping for a mild summer. And if that's the case, man, shoo, I mean, the bikers, it never stops. The diehards are all 110. They're still going to ride. Uh, are you going to any big events this year yourself? Uh, no, we were down in Daytona a couple weeks ago. I went to Daytona to see that maybe in October. Hold on, you were there, there for bike week? Or I you was there, there for bike week, uh-huh. Yeah. Did you take a bike? Uh, no, I actually flew down there and rented a Harley and drove over. Oh, okay. okay. I have friends in Tampa. That's so fine. I flew so you got a there. bike when yeah, you got there. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. all that matters. Yeah, yeah. We had to skip it. We were too busy this year, man, to be there. But, oh, what a great time it is. Were you there with Jerry? Uh, we went to Jerry's house, yeah, Jerry and Kenny's house. We stayed with them there in Tampa and then uh, drove over on Friday. Yeah. Ah, cool. You, how many days were you there? Uh, I was there in Florida for 10 days. I only spent a day there uh, at, the, at the track. Okay. Oh, week. you went to the Indianapolis, the track? Yeah, Daytona, yeah. Whatever. I have uh, some friends that race and want to see them. Not Indianapolis, the uh, Daytona, Daytona track. Daytona, yeah, Daytona um, Speedway. All right, cool. Yeah, that's a man. That's a huge event there. Yeah, yeah. It was we a lot got of fun. kicked out of there, <laughs> um, but uh, we were there for every bit of two hours, and we were as you know we were escorted out because we had a crowd of people following us around, but we weren't a vendor, and we were walking. As we were walking, it, it's like you never seen like the the cartoons where someone stinks. And they have the surrounded by the smell. You could see us walking as we were walking. It was just me and like a couple of girls. As we were walking, though, a swarm of people followed us like flies. We we're just and they're like, y'all gotta leave. Oh, you're you're causing disturbance and you're not a vendor. And yeah, like, it, se it seems like every year the police get worse and worse. Even on the motorcycle guys, you seem like it seems like they'd give them some leeway, but each year it gets stricter and stricter down there. Ah, oh, it sucks so bad. We were just, I mean, it was a fun event, but they made us leave, man. I was like, are you kidding me? He's like, y'all gotta go. You're not paying. Y'all getting too much attention. You're not paying to be here. You gotta go. So uh, anyway, so we went down. To, have you been to any of the events there? Like uh, the cabbage? You heard of the cabbage patch there? No, uh -uh, have they not. They do like uh, some coleslaw wrestling with chicks. Oh, gosh. They drop a motorcycle like 200 feet under the ground and destroy it. It's just a crazy, crazy time. Are you going to be at Rot Rally? Uh, may go down there. Uh, we've been a few years there. I know there's one in Galveston that we may try to hit, too. So there's a couple different things we're looking at. Man, have you been to Rot Rally in the past? Yes, I have. Have you been to the Naked Bike Parade? Yes, I've been there. Have to oh. hit that at least once in your life. Were you in it? No, I was not. No, I think uh, I think it's girls only from what I saw. I don't know where, which side you were at. But. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that is the weirdest thing. I mean, you're walking around and girls that are old and have their sloppy. Oh, they're, it's, they're, it's terrible. They got yes. their tops off and yes. they don't need to be, but it's still funny. You can't help but watch and it's, like it. It's a freak show. It, it is. I've never, I didn't know what to expect, man. I was like, what in the hell we walked into? <laughs> and now we're a big part of it, man. I, th I got told yesterday or last week that we're going to be, we're going to be downtown. You've been to the parade? Yep, yep. Okay, last year we got to lead the parade. Like, uh, they had a boat, and I was on a microphone just picking on people as we drove through the, through the thing. That's cool. And uh, the girls were there, and uh, then we got to get up on the stage. You've been to the concert downtown on yep. Friday night? Yep. How many people are down there, man? Oh, gosh, you can't even count them, man. Uh, it's like, crazy. Is it safe to say there's like over 50,000? Yeah, oh, yeah. I don't know the numbers, but, I mean, you can't you can't even ride a motorcycle. You can barely walk. I mean, standing room only, downtown Austin. I've I mean. never been there for the parade. I sat there. The year before, we got basically uh, screwed over by a guy, and we showed up and just, you know, got thrown the dogs. Then the next year, we had a pretty major sponsor that's part of it um, down there, a Harley shop, and um, 
Cowboy Harley sponsors, and they're real big involved in the whole rot rally. It's their territory and their sponsor. So we were taken really good care of. But, man, we went to the parade and had no idea how big this parade was. We cheated. We got to the parade when it was getting into downtown, so we kind of jumped in front of everybody on the boat. And, you know, we're having this Harley thing drive us around. And uh, so then we get off. the. We do two laps, and uh, we get off, and we wait as the bikers start pulling in. They all pull in one at a time. They park. And there goes another one, another one. Hmm. Man, it took two hours. We sat there for two hours clapping for people. Dude. <laughs> like, oh, man, it's crazy. And then we got to get up on the stage. The band got on there, and uh, then they put us up on stage, and I was nervous, dude. I've never been in, so, in front of so many people on a microphone in my life. Um, I didn't have just CB looking at me. <laughs> and I, had, <laughs> you know, you know, I had such a sea of people that you mm -hmm. could see forever, and then the Capitol building's at the end of the street. And I remember saying, like, can I get a hell yeah, Austin, Texas? And you hear this, hell yeah. It's kind of like a waves. Like it just kind of like slowly rumbled down. That is the most powerful feeling I've ever had in my oh, yeah. life. Lead the people. I could say anything, they're going to repeat it, and it's like the echo effect, dude. It was so cool, and I didn't want to go off the stage then. <laughs> Power I trip. Went, I went from being so nervous to the lady that runs Rock Rally saying, yeah, i got to go off stage now. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not going nowhere. Because I did like a little uh, small bikini contest. Oh, cool! But uh, it was fun, dude. It was really, it was like as close that's, to being a rock rock star as you could get. And it's it, a blast. It was, like I said, nervous. And I'll be nervous this year. I'll get super nervous. I'll be sweating. I'll be worried. I'm gonna say the wrong thing. You know, I, I've I've done something that I've never done to y'all, you guys. And uh, but occasionally I will slip and say the wrong place I'm at. Oh man! You don't want to do that. Terrible. It's Terrible. a bad thing. So I was under so much pressure because I work with another, you know, I work with a lot of Harley shops. Right. And there's, there's a couple that sound similar that kind of, I just get them, you know, my, mentally I get them confused sometimes. And I was so nervous about saying the wrong shop who I work with all the time because it was my first time to work for that shop. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't get it out of my head. It was, yeah. it, but I, I, so I went out there and the first thing I said was that shop's name. There you go. You know, I love them, know who they are, but just was so worried. Got it out of the way and then I was just, I was fine. But That's Rock great. Rally, good time. If, good if, time. You, if you go down there this year, look me up because we'll be there for like four days. We'll be having a good time. But uh, all right, once again, man, Kevin, thanks for being on the show today. Yeah. We're going to bring Sam the mailman in. We're going to have to talk to him. Oh, he's gone? Oh, we missed him again. Oh, dang it, man. All right, it's okay. Well, uh, like I said, Kevin, thanks for having us in. We're going to talk, talk about some dating. Can we get her over here a little bit? Do you, you mind? Bet. Do you Allison, mind? our new receptionist. She's been here for all of 